So now let's understand how to get these charges actually moving. So we already understood that we can create separation of charges. So the charges can be separated. We can create positive as well as negative charges. So I have two jars here. Now somehow, right, just let's just suppose somehow I have managed to create, fill one of these jars with positive charges and the other one with negative charges, right? So what I did was essentially I took out electrons from this jar and I put them in the other one. Okay, so this is, let's say that this is jar one, this is jar two. I took out electrons from jar one and I pushed them into jar two. As you can understand, initially when I'm moving the first electron, it would be relatively very easy because there is, there is no charge in jar, jar two. The jar two is completely empty. So the first electron, I should be able to pry away from jar one. I should be able to take it from jar one and put it in jar two relatively easily. The second electron, when I'm trying to do that, I would require a little bit more energy. Why is that? Because jar one is already positively charged. There is a positive charge right there. So I have to use some energy to pry away the electron, which is negative. So positive, negative, they attract. So I have to use some energy to pry away the electron. And then when I'm trying to insert it into jar two, I would need still more energy because the jar two is negative and negative, negative, they would be repelling. So I need, I use a little more energy to push it into jar. Two. And similarly, the third electron, I would really need to pull it hard from jar one and push it really hard in jar two, right? So, so slowly and gradually, I would be spending more and more energy as I am uh, taking away the electrons from jar one and putting them into jar two. Okay, so there is a, the, the key thing I want you to understand is that when I am doing this charge separation, I need energy, okay? So there is a need of energy in this process. So this is the first thing that we need to understand. Now let's say that I connect my jar two with jar one using an electric wire, okay? So this is a copper wire, normal wire that we see in our households, nothing is special. I mean, the special <laughs> thing about this wire is of course that it can conduct electrons. So what does it mean? That although the electrons cannot really escape, they cannot go into the air, the jar is closed, okay? We, can, we don't allow them to escape. They can and they are allowed to travel along this wire okay so this is there is a wire connecting this negative and the positive uh, charges in the respective jar so there is a wire connecting that as soon as i connect this wire think about what would happen i mean think that you are an electron sitting in jar 2 what would you feel you will feel a lot of repulsion from all the electrons around you so you would really try to escape so as soon as I connect this wire, the electrons start escaping from jar two. And of course, they are very happy in jar one because there is positive charge there. So they are attracted. So they quickly go into jar two. Okay. So this is the reverse process. We used up energy when we were separating the charges. We would nearly need to put some energy. And here, the electrons are now traveling on their own. Okay. So that is the this these electrons which are traveling on their own along the wire can be made to do work so for example if i were to connect a light bulb right here okay then this light bulb as the electrons go through it it will start glowing okay so this is a very simple process of making these charges do some work traditionally what happened was when benjamin franklin was doing his experiments he just assumed that the current was due to positive charges and not really negative okay so the current was not due to in his time the electrons they were not they didn't really understand that so he thought that the current was there he saw that something was flowing but he thought that this was positive charges so although the electronic current the current due to electrons is from the negative towards the positive jar the traditional current or the current that benjamin franklin thought is in opposite direction okay and this is known as conventional current or just current okay this is in opposite direction it goes from the positive to negative and in the electronic current electrons are flowing like negative charged particles are flowing in the conventional current we say that positively charged particles are going okay so that is the conventional current and the bottom one is the electronic current okay so this is the key thing that we need to understand similarly we said that in the beginning that we, when, when we were separating the charges we were prying away the electrons from the positive jar and moving them to the negative jar okay this was the the, the electronic way of looking at it 
if you look at it conventional way, what we are actually doing, what we would be doing, we would be prying away positive charges from the negative jar, right, from this jar and putting it into the, uh, the positive jar. Okay, So, we are prying away the positive charges from the negative jar and putting them into the positive, positive jar. Okay. So here what we have done, this is the conventional way of looking at things and this is actually what we would be using from now onwards. So think about it, although in actual circuits electron might be flowing, but we always, uh, our conventionally when we show in the arrows, we always show the conventional current in which the positive charges are flowing and that is always in opposite direction. So the equations and everything does not change, it is that just the polarity of the charges and the direction of the arrows that changes. Okay, so that so far it is, I hope it is clear. Now our jars 1 and one and 2, okay, these are what we have labeled them, okay. Let us now introduce some terminology, okay. So one thing that we introduced was the idea of conventional current, okay. So that is the conventional, uh, conventional current and it flows from the positively charged jar to the negatively charged jar, okay. So that is what the conventional current is, that is what we will draw now. And of course, we are prying away the positive particles, positively ch positive charges from this negative jar and taking them to the positive jar, okay. When we are doing this prying away, we are using some energy, okay, to move a charge of one coulomb from this negative jar and putting it in the positive jar, we are doing some work. This work is known as the EMF or electromotive force. It is something which is inside the battery. It is the work that the battery is doing to create the charge separation. Okay, It is inside the battery. This EMF is inside the battery. It is the mechanism inside the battery which is creating this charge separation. What, ha what happens as a result of this EMF? This work done by the battery is actually available at the two terminals of the battery, okay. So, this our two jars, the top of the jars are actually two terminals of the battery. The two terminals of the battery, this work done, the EMF inside the battery is available, the work done inside the battery is available as a potential difference on the two terminals and this potential difference is what drives the electrons or the current from the positive end to negative end. So that work done inside the battery is available outside as potential or the voltage of the battery and this voltage of the battery drives the electric current and allows us to do all sorts of work. The two terminals of the battery, one is positive charge, okay. So this is the voltage available right here, okay. I will just show it here, voltage and this voltage you might have seen it inside like written on the battery 1.5 volt, 3 volt, 9 volt, okay. For example, here I have a 9 volt battery right here, okay. So, this is 9 volt battery and this is the voltage available on the terminals because of the EMF, the work done inside the battery. This, uh, this terminal which is positively charged, okay, the positive terminal is known as anode of the battery and the negative terminal is known as cathode of the battery, okay. And when I connect the anode and the cathode, I can get electric current, okay. And the current flows from anode to cathode. 